It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Our conversation with Martin Dugard, the author of Taking Paris, the Epic Battle for the City of Lights, brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Martin, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful, and it's good to have you with us here today. We know the cast of characters, almost all of them, even as we head into uh, reading your book, but it is so amazing to watch all of the -the behind-the-scenes action uh, uh, surrounding this topic. Taking Paris back uh, after first losing Paris is is just a fascinating topic. How did you decide that you were going to go after this topic? You know, I I have to say that... um... I mean, I'm kind of a history geek, and I realized there were gaps in my knowledge about World War II, and as I, in, most of them just began with May 10th, 1940, and the, the German invasion of France, and as I studied it, and I read about the, the reaction of the people of Paris, the blasé reaction of the people of Paris, like, they thought Paris would never fall, and it, it kind of just, you know, there was something about it that just resonated, and I began, as I began studying it, as I began uh, learning about how the Nazis marched into the city unopposed, and the the people of Paris slowly, uh, they went from welcoming the Germans, if it can be called that, but, you know, they were very they were very uh, kind to the Germans, the Germans were kind in return, until it got to the point over the next four years that uh, it became a very, very hostile relation, and you had the Germans, uh, you know, arresting people in the dead of night, and there were firing squads, and, you know, the, the growth of the resistance, all of which really just uh, fascinated me, and then of course, you have Churchill, you have Patton, you have all these mm-hmm. these big players who, who come onto the stage. And uh, from a storytelling point of view, that's kind of irresistible when you have that, that mixture of intrigue and, and, and great historical figures. It's wonderful for me to catch up with some of these characters, too. We have this image that at the beginning of World War II, or when it came to taking France, uh, uh, the French were there looking out from the Maginot Line, uh, expecting the Germans to come right at them, and that the Germans went around them, and the French were hapless. Uh, Charles de Gaulle certainly wouldn't have put it that way, would he? No, you know, <laughs> i got to tell you, before, uh, before I wrote this, before I began researching, I didn't know much about de Gaulle. I just kind of knew the post-war de Gaulle. And then you read about this guy, and he, he had to be a little bit, a little bit crazy. I mean, he was he he thought himself a man of destiny. And when the rest of the uh, the French army was laying down its arms and, and and getting out of their tanks and surrendering to the Germans, he fought on. And he he literally fought from one side of the France the France to the other, trying to save his nation, trying to save Paris. And when the rest of uh, the rest of the, the French government fled and and surrendered. He, he took himself over to to England to 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 work you know to kind of plead with Churchill for assistance and you know if you visualize De Gaulle he was a very tall man he had a, kind of a small head and a big nose he had wide hips you know the the British press made fun of him said the the hips of a woman he was a chain smoker and when he went to England he had he had nothing he had no army he had no money he had no reason to, to believe that he was the the, that the fate of France rested in his hands, but he believed it, and he actually made it come true. He's uh, the the characters are so richly drawn in your book, and again, we're talking with Martin Dugard, and it's taking Paris, the epic battle for the city of lights. Uh, the idea of Winston Churchill and empire, uh, it was uh, certainly uh, within his uh, scope of, of thinking that uh, it, he wanted to preserve the British Empire at the same time that he was fighting this terrible, terrible war. Uh, and his interactions at the beginning of the war with uh, the folks uh, in France, and then as the invasion, the Normandy invasion approached, and uh, he really wanted to uh, not actually go that route. Uh, it, it's really fascinating to watch uh, Winston Churchill perform, which is what he does all throughout World War II, but especially in this venue. Yeah, you know, and I find Churchill to be a fascinating character. And I had never written about him before, but I had studied him. Um, and I, I wanted to write, first of all, you know, when I wrote this book, I wanted to write something that had a, an epic sweep to it, but I wanted it to be a page turner. I wanted it to, uh, like a Jason Bourne novel, like you would turn the pages and, and one thing would lead to another. And, but, and Churchill was kind of the glue that held, that held that narrative together because he's, he's right there at the start. You know, he's the guy trying to save France right at the very beginning. He's the guy who, is is despite the fact that he and De Gaulle had some very bitter arguments, 
he's the guy who supports De Gaulle throughout the war, and and he eventually works with Roosevelt. We have with D Day, we have the liberation of Paris. None of that happens without Winston Churchill. He he really is uh, an amazing figure, and and like you said, at the same time he's doing that, he's watching his empire his empire dissolve in India and in the Pacific, and it must have been an excruciating uh, amount of stress. On him, you know. Obviously, no wonder he drank. But, <laughs> but it's just, just it's just one of those things where uh, he really rose to the occasion. He really did. Um, the resistance, of course, Virginia Hall has always been a favorite character of mine. She's an American, a one-legged American who's a, a master spy. I want to talk to something that you just said, and we only have a couple of moments left with Martin Dugard. Your decision to put this book in the present tense uh, really is a key to it because it does. It moves the action along at a tremendous pace. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I just thought, I wanted that you are there feeling for the reader. I didn't want it to feel like you were reading a, a dry academic history told in the past tense. I wanted them to feel like they were right there with the characters. They were right there with Virginia Hall as she's climbing over the Pyrenees and right there with Churchill as he speaks to the House of Commons. Just, I really, that was my goal. And thanks very much for saying that because, uh, that, I mean, every single day when I got up to write, that was like, okay, let's, let's put the reader right in the action. And and being that, we, we get really inside knowledge of what's going on. And at the same time, it preserves that air of mystery about it. It's just a, a brilliantly done piece of work. Where are people going to learn more about your book and about Taking Paris? Well, uh, Taking Paris, can, you can buy it anywhere. Um, independent bookstores, Barnes & Nobles, uh, you can go on Amazon. It's everywhere. And uh you know, go out and, you know, encourage people to go out and give it a read and, you know, send me your feedback. You can go to my website, martindugard.com, and, and send me an email and let me know what you think of the book. What are people telling you about it? What are you hearing from other historians? Uh, nothing. That's the thing. It just came, <laughs> it just came out. And, you know, I, some of the people I showed it to, you know, uh, one of the Churchill historians really loved it, and he read it in, in two days. But... You know, it's so early in the process, you know, and as, a, as an author, when you write something like this, I mean, it's been finished since February. And so the, it finally, it's, you know, here we are, September, it's finally coming out. And, um, you know, this is, this is what you wait for. You're not really looking to hear about the sales. You're, you're looking to hear what people think about it, especially your peers. So I would, I'm excited to, when people start giving me reviews. I, I'm looking forward to that. Well, we know Bill O'Reilly Bill O'Reilly likes it because, uh, after all, you guys have worked together a long time. Martin Dugard, thank you so much for visiting with us today. Appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks. Thanks.